Hello and welcome to another Building Middle Earth uh, video. Uh, in this we're going to be making some Oscillia Fruins. Uh, in this particular video uh, we're going to be making some uh, basic ruins. Kind of look like this. We're making uh, some stairs. Which look like this. A walkway. Looks like this. And this raised platform area so you can get a bit of height into your, into your games. Uh, this you can also utilize if you've already got on the Games Workshop miniatures, which are excellent. Uh, they come set like this, like that, some stairs, and two statues, as you can see here. Uh, you know, you, you can just get away with just buying a load of them, throwing them on the table, but making your own and adding to it adds a bit of variety to it. So in this video, yeah, we're just going to be covering those basic ruins I mentioned, and in a later video we might work on some feature buildings, a tower and so forth. But for now, let's crack on. To make a basic ruin, we're going to make it out of a foam core, 6mm foam core. Use any colour you want, I'm just using white. It doesn't really matter, I'm using white mainly, just so it shows up. Uh, that's what I'm going to do, let's measure, it's going to be three and a half inches high and I'm going to measure it's going to make it's going to be doubly thick and it's going to be six inches I think sort of decide on the size yeah six inches so one of these six inches yeah And then I'm also measure one here about five and a half because I want the uh, second part of the wall to be smaller. So five and a half. The ruins are going to be there, can be uh, doubled thickness of the uh, foam core. Maybe three and a half, Maybe three and a half. And what are you going to do? We're going to cut these out afterwards. Cutting out foam core. Have to use a really sharp knife. It's just a case now. Although with these ruins, doesn't matter too much if it pulls and tears because they're ruins. But it's best to do it. Not the camera. It's best to do it in. Uh, don't try and do it in one go. Cut it through in one go. But then once. So, and go down a second time. You might need to do three times. But if you're not sharp enough, you could get away with just doing it twice. So then, again, initial cut through. So this, now you've got your two parts, we won't cut through this just yet, it'll be easy if we don't. So you've got one part, it's five and a half, and one part is six, and one part is six inches, one part five and a half. So for now, 
put that one up there for now. Next, what you want to do is kind of uh, draw a rough sort of look on how you want your ruins to uh, to go. Um, go on something like this. Do it more like this actually. Something like that. And also, uh, this bit doesn't need to be too, too perfect or anything. I'm just gonna something like that. That's how our ruin's going to look. It's all cut out. But before we do that, I want to, it's easier to mark out at this stage the uh, detailing we're going to do. I want a, a door on this side and a window here. Now, the door I want sort of two inches tall. And one thing I'm going to use is it's going to be a rounded door and to get the uh, the round at the top I'm going to use a, uh, a base a cavalry base because I can I know most things will be able to pass through the door so it's going to be a bit of something like that for now we're going to measure measure the height of it that's where it's going to come to well faint guideline there and then uh, we're just gonna actually I reckon gonna give it another half quarter of an inch actually so it's two and a quarter inches Line that up. put this in place where you feel you want your door I'm gonna actually put it underneath the bit where it's got the most at the top and just uh, Draw around it like that. Easy to use a set square for this because you can just then that's where one door is going to go. On this side, I want a window. Now for this. Probably take a bit more time measuring, but I'm just going to do some eyeballing on this just for speed because I'm on the camera. The bottom of it, <coughs> and I think I'm going to want it to be an inch and a quarter tall. I think. about an inch wide, about the width of a ruler, so I'll put that there, there we go, but I want it to be, uh, have a slight arch on it on the top, so again, just using that base, just draw around and that'll be a window, that's our door, all that's left to do now is to cut out the actual uh, it's actually probably going to be easier <coughs> if I now cut through like this the reason uh, I'm doing it like this because they're going to butt up together like so so you want this bit and this bit to be the same height that's just a case of uh, Cutting out the uh, I've made some others of these already and I did them quite neat and tidy whereas this one I want to be quite <coughs> ruinous so as you can see I'm not really taking too much trouble to cut it out 
get it all nice. It's a ruin. I want it to look like the building's had some damage done to it. So, same with this. What I'll make sure is that my cut ends up on the, uh, the line. Carefully now, because this has to be a better cut, cut around the door, and this is where you go back to doing it in multiple cuts. Lifting the knife out of itself then to re reposition it. you guys are making these I'd hope you take more time than this just because I'm uh, doing it on camera so um, there we go cut out the window on this side Uh, too precise with your, with your cuts. But there you go. <coughs> now, of course, feel free to just leave it like that, glue them together, do some brickwork pattern in them if you want. But we've got these sides, if you remember. We're going to do double thickness to get a bit of extra detail work in here. The first thing you're going to want to do now, line it up. And then draw around your old one. So we know where the door is. And the same the other side. And got to go. Oh, I forgot to do the window. Don't forget to do the window. Next is to cut out this bit, but don't cut out these just yet. And what I'll do is I'll come back when I've cut these out. So I've got both bits cut out now. I haven't cut out the middle bits on the window. Because for this, we're going to be uh, just keep making it look a bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is come up, draw a couple of lines here. Smidge there, like so. Smidge there, like so. And then 
I'll put it along with me properly. I mean, I know. Come across to about here, like so. And what we're going to do is cut out this bit. Just, you know, just gives a bit more interest to the, uh, to the doors rather than just a plain door. And what will pass this through with the knife? Some nice cuts. This secondary window here, what we're going to do is draw a line. I'm only eyeballing it. Get out of my mouth. I'm only eyeballing this up. I would probably recommend doing a bit. I keep saying this a lot when I do these things, don't I? You guys should take a bit more time than what I'm doing. Look at that. And then. circle like that and these are going to be the bits we cut out what I'll do is I'll pause it and I'll cut these bits out there you go everything's cut out window looking like that now again might want to tidy those up which we'll do a bit later on the door looking like that all that's left to do now bit of glue glue these bits together. PVA. Come together. One section. And now put that to one side to dry it. Do the same with this. those to uh, leave those dry. Next up what we want to do is now glue them together. Uh, so they're going to look like that. Easiest way to do this. Some PVA. Just run it down here. Like so. in like so uh, for extra strength what you can do get some pins we uh, dress making pins uh, push them through and make sure it actually goes into the other side of the phone call on there I don't need many of these. I do this a lot when I'm gluing bits of phone call like this together. It's just good just to, to get a hold. Oh, that one, that one going. There you go. That's going to hold it when it dries. Just free in there. What I want to do now is uh. A bit of detail work in. Uh, gonna add some cornerstones here, just some little stones around here, some stones around here. This is easily done. An old, it's quite handy. Old Games Workshop box. New cereal box for this, but I think we order loads of models, don't we? Will recycle now. 
begin with, let's do the uh, let's do the cornerstone. Uh, it's probably going to be easier with this if I get some scissors. I'll come back when I've got those. So what I've done is out of the box, a bit of a fold in. I've cut out the same sort of roughly the same sort of height as the uh, the ring, and because it's got the fold already, it's just going to make it easier. What we're going to be doing is drawing a uh, brickwork pattern in here. Uh, at its height, you want to make sure you cover this edge of the uh, foam core up, and also it just adds a bit of extra strength. So if we do it again, eyeballing this terrible habit. Probably want to measure it if you do it. I'm a terrible for this, I'm, I'm an eyeballer. There you go. Let's clean it with. Cut this out. And that will go, go there. need to do got some, got some brick pattern out no real rhyme or reason to this uh, make your bricks I don't know, roughly half inch half inch I'm gonna do it's again just die balding some bigger than others it doesn't matter too much on there. Oh, we removed on there. Right, so, and then what we're going to do is cut out those bits there, which I'll pause and come back to. That's all the uh, cornerstones cut out. What I have to do now is glue them in place. Again, we're using PVA for this. These might be a bit stubborn and come on stuck. So there you go, just glue them in. You just do them in alternating long and short. like that that's being stubborn now eventually it will stick down it's easier to do it when you've got them all stuck in place we tend to find one stick side sticks down more than the other side for now we'll just get some glue on them and hold them in place till they're dry basic rooms is quite quick and easy so you should be able to get quite a few of these made in an afternoon get your table covered in ruins but what we're going to do after we finish this one is make some others more set piece ruins as it were so there we go here we go that's all the ruins put in what you're just going to have to do now is hold them in place really until they've, until they've taken. So I'm not going to bore you by leaving it running while that's going on. So you can see they keep popping up. Should only take a few minutes. So yeah, that's all in place now. So the cornerstone, you may need to trim the top bit around to go around to match the uh, top of your ruin there. There it is. Next, we just want to add some detail around the windows and the door so simply enough done because we used this as a, a measure just need to uh, draw around it like so and uh, let's do one over here let's do the door first and then to do the door it's just a case of uh, 
cool down slightly bigger. And uh, it's working that way you want your, your cuts to be. Like so I'm going to cut that out. And the window, of course, is slightly different, isn't it? It's just a little smidge. It's just a little bit like that. That's the same principle. Okay, cut. What I'll do is I'll cut these out and we'll stick them on. That's the uh, doorway bits cut out and kept in order. Uh, for this, to get some PVA, some around the archway where you're going to stick them, and then just stick them in, leaving an ever so slightly small gap between them, just for a bit of detail, just so it looks like brickwork. Like so, and because what you'll probably find is because you've been leaving a little gap, yeah, I'm not going to need all of them. Probably so yeah, I might need, might use that other one. Spread them out a bit more. You really want to see, see the gap in between them. There you go. And just do the same the window bit. I shall come I'll do that now. And that's the window done. Believe it or not, we are almost done with the ruins. All that's left to do now is what we're gonna wanna do is uh, score a pattern in. Uh, much the same as we did with uh you've seen the mid minus tier of uh, making a video. And the reason I haven't I've done this last because I find it easy to do the pattern so it matches the cornerstone. Now if I just move the camera back a bit for this, easiest way to do this is put it on the edge of the table, lay down your ruler uh, so it lines up with the cornerstone. Get a ballpoint pen. Yeah, much like minus. I hope you can see this. Much like minus Tirith. You're just going to score into the. Uh, probably easy to do if you do this as a set square. Again, I'm eyeballing. My biggest thing when it comes to terrain making. But you just go through. And score in a brickwork pan. So I'll carry on with that and we'll come back when I'm done. On the home straight now, brickwork pattern scored in. Don't forget to do the inside. I've cut out some card blocks, same sort of width as these. And all you're going to do here is add a little bit of some, just so it's not so flat really. Bricks, just put them in, put them in places where you think, okay, perhaps two on this side. Here and here, there's not much rhyme or reason to this. So, I can get one, another one on there, so we'll put it on this side. That one in the bottom here. There we go. There you go, it just adds a little, little bit of extra dimension to it. So you got blocks that just sort of stick out a bit. And if some are sticking out, you want some to uh, be pushed in a bit. So with this, I'm going to just take a sculpting tool and push the foam in a bit. On that. So you're just pushing in, sort of breaking it. And 
on this paint it will just give it a more more detailed look on there. Uh, that one looks good. Sometimes it's easier to actually really cut the uh, paper. Let's just go push it down. Probably easier if you wait for things to dry as well, but as always when you're doing a video, I don't really have time. Okay, I think that'll do. Maybe that one now. Next up, take a brock from your garden and just push it in the foam a bit. And ideally wait till your air all the card you stuck on is dry. Just push it in and pop mark the paper the foam core. So that when it's painted you can get a nice sort of uh, textured effect. Do that on the other side. There's a lot to work on on this side. And again, don't forget to do the inside. This will just because you're going to be dry brushing these foam core is quite a smooth material. I don't, want to, I'm like, oh, don't do what I've just done there, <laughs> break it. It really is a ruin now. Uh, yeah, so back where I was waffling on about. Because the foam core is quite a smooth surface, we want a dry brush to get some detail on these. This is what this does. Don't need to be a lot, just to get a bit of a uh, bit of texture on the walls, like so. And that'll be that'll be it. That's the actual construction of these complete. Put it to one side to let it totally dry. And all we're going to be doing it, doing now is painting it, and that is your basic ruins. You can make quite a few of these in an afternoon to fill your Oscar F board up. But we can do set piece bits now. Uh, do some stairs, a walkway, but we're going to do that out of other materials. So this is just using foam core, which we'll work on next. Okay, next up, we're going to be making a little ruined stairway piece. We're going to be making this out of some uh, Hearst Art stair blocks. Uh, you need the mould number, I believe it's 60 or 65, I'll put it in the description. Uh, some blue insulating foam and some uh, extruded foam. First thing you're going to want to do is glue this together. Like most things in this project build, glue, glue of choice is PVA. This will take a fair bit to dry though because uh, they'll start stuff, the uh, Hook like 2 stuff's quite porous, so, but we'll get it on the go, we'll get this glued in. So it's going to make a little, little stair section. Like so. That's one side, leave it a dry. I'm going to have to leave this dry fully until we carry on because we're going to use this for our, our height of our stairs. So we'll come back when it's dry. Whilst we're waiting for the, um, the stairs to dry, come on. we're going to make the actual main body of your stairwell, which is just made from this foam. It needs to be two and a half inches uh, tall. So what we're just doing here is cutting it down to size. And if you're doing serious about doing terrain work, I can't recommend a desk wire cutter enough. Such good good instruments to have. You're going to be using it a lot. So there you go. That's going to be the main body of stairs. Now I've just got to, you want it to be three inches long, so I'm just going to 
now cut this bit off, which is good because it's a, oh, don't worry about that, because we're going to be cutting that out soon as well. Now what you want to do, bing, is the stairs are going to sit in here. Uh, so what you want to do is mark out an inch along here, two inches here, two inches, inch. Just give that a little, uh, a little chop. little mistake there that I did earlier on. What are you going to be used? So there you go, you've got a little L shape and it's still drying so I don't want to knock around too much. What's going to happen is your stairs are going to sit in there like that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to come back when it's all dry and we do the next bit and which is the uh, Gluing the stairs in place and covering this in a uh, isolation foam cladding. Next up, what we want to do <coughs> is carve a uh, score a little uh, flagstone pattern in this. So uh, easy done. Ballpoint pen, like so. No. Up to you how you do yours. We'll just. Uh, in there. Uh, next, while we're waiting for the stairs to dry still, uh, I'm going to make the uh, cladding that's going to go in this. For this, a little bit of insulation for board, uh, it's going to be cut to 4 inches by 4 and 3 quarter inches. And that's going to go here. Next bit is going to be 3 inches and again, four and three quarters. And that is just gonna go like that. And what we're gonna do now is uh, draw a sort of ring pattern into it and have a window, ring window here. So what I'll do is I'll draw that and then come back when it's all, all drawn out and we'll cut it out. There we go, cut them out. What we're gonna have here, that's gonna go here, that's going to go there, so what you got is a ruined window there, and this will be part of the doorway that will lead onto some sort of platform here. Um, while it's like this, let's just save, save a bit of time, I'm going to quickly mark where it's going to be glued to, in that section we won't need to do a brickwork pattern. So you're going to need to uh, pull pot pen, ruler, carve in a brickwork pattern. It's all quite standard by now surely. Which is what I'm going to do now. It's a brickwork pattern scored into these bits. The only thing you've got to really uh, make sure of is they line up when they join. Uh, we are going to score a brickwork pattern into this section here. It's easy to do that now. I would leave it that one actually, it'd be easy to do that on the stairs or anything. Uh, I'm just going to carry on with the cladding. I'm going to put a bit in the front here and a bit coming out here, which 
get on with now. In fact, uh, glue these in. Um, don't forget to do the uh, stonework at the back and then glue these in place. So what I've done is I've cut out the remaining cladding bits. This bit here is going to go on the ends here, like so. And that is an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter wide by two and three quarters. It's going to go there. And sticking out the end is going to be this end bit here, which is the same height and roughly inch and three quarters and the width of the bottom. That's just going to go here. Like so the stairs will fit in here and then with the stairs you can have this I come around here end rail bit that will go here. So now this is the same height as this so it's like two and a half inches and it's widest it's four and a quarter that's narrowest it's one and three quarters you just sort of cut a ramp that follows the same width of the stairs so what I'm going to do now is actually glue these bits in place glue your stairs in and we're done pretty much so get some glue like that in I love working with this material it's such a good material there you go, put that in Bead the glue along here put that in here now <coughs> the stairs going to go in here like so uh, so it's just a case of getting some glue print it all over the stairs I don't think this is still quite true uh, dry yet, but what the hey? Barely in there. What the hey? Put that there. Turn it on its side. Some glue along this bit. Some glue here. And be the glue alongside. I haven't finished the uh, brickwork here. One thing I have done is on the edges here, I've done sort of a flagstone sort of thing there, it's a capping stone even. Put that in. <coughs> While it's on the side, quickly go in. finished a brickwork pan and this is how easy it is to do a brickwork pan with this stuff. Full point pen. Most difficult thing is making sure it all lines up but you shouldn't have any problems with that. And there it is. That is pretty much it. That is your stone ruin piece. Dry. What we're going to make up next is <coughs> something for this, some sort of platform thing for this to lead up to. So we've made the stairway piece, but at the moment it's leading up to nowhere. So uh, we're going to build a little raised walkway area. Uh, to do this, I'm going to cut a bit of, uh, bit of insulation foam. It's going to be uh, three inches wide, and the length is really it's up to you really uh, I've made mine just uh, about nine and a quarter inches just just because so you're gonna need one piece of them you're gonna need two side bits like so these are the same length as your walkway now, but the height of them because you want it to be uh, level with this so it's the height of this section here minus a uh, quarter of an inch worth because of the uh, width of the uh, the foam because it's going to sit like that and these going to be underneath so 
something like that. So it needs to sit like that. So, so in this case, it's just just slightly over two inches. So you're going to need two of those, and then you're going to need two end bits. So these are the same height as the two bits you just cut out, and their width is three inches minus two widths of the foam. So in this it's two and a half inches because this foam is about a quarter of an inch thick. So they'll go like this. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to first, before we do anything, is add four arches into the side bits. And to do this, it's going to take take a base. And I'm just going to draw around it. Uh, I would recommend doing probably a bit more accurate measuring here, but we are just for the purposes of this this tutorial. We're just going to speak through and eyeball it. I reckon about there. So it's not going to be that that accurate. Be there. Actually, I don't do it too bad actually. What we're doing. Draw around it. And it's going to be your archways. What you're going to want to do now is cut these out and then we'll uh, once you've cut them out put the other bit underneath and just trace around or draw around the holes and then cut them out so what we we'll do is we'll come back we've cut them out and take it and assemble the piece so we've cut out all the arches and I've done some detail work and I've also done all the brickwork, all the scoring on the other bits. We have a nice flagstone effect on the floor. All that's left to do now is assemble it. The easiest way to do this is a uh, it's bit is it can be a bit fiddly, but just get a bead of glue down there and a bead of glue down there. Some along there some along there. Now uh, grab your uh, other bit here, I'm going to do two, two one. Bead of glue down there and a bead of glue there. It's probably easier sometimes if you just uh, do it in sections but again for the purpose of a video we don't have uh, the luxury of that. Yep, we just Fit it on, make sure it's all level, all lined up. Uh, do the same for this one, actually it's probably easier now. Uh, I'll my glue. Bit of glue down there. Bit of glue there. in place. Now just add the last bit in. And that's it. Make sure it's all uh, lined up. What we do now is uh, put that to one side to dry. While you're waiting for it to dry, and it, you can uh, add some detail work on, which is going to use these little pins, detail top. And unfortunately, I don't have enough here, but just for now, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, they're just going to go along the front here, above each column of the pillar. And this will do two things this will also strengthen it, hold it in place, and look. Give it a bit of extra, extra detail work. You just go in like so. Make 
sure they would line up. Uh, you could either carry on going here, which I'll probably buy some new ones. I have one painted here, completed so you can see what it looks like. But yeah, add, add the rest in, or I don't know, I might even carve a bit of it out. Look a bit ruined at the edges here, don't know yet, we'll see. But basically, that's your, uh, that's your walkway complete. Now get your stairs section. Have it on there so you can go upstairs and go along the walkway. Uh, you can either have a secondary platform there, or another stairway section here to come down on. But what I'm planning on doing is making a uh, sort of a big raised area, same height as this, so about a foot square, and we're going to put some, so it's got some ruins on top, so you've got some some height to the whole piece, which will come, which we'll make next. So here I've cut out a uh, square of the insulation foam that is uh, one foot square, so it's 12 inches there, 12 inches there. I then just scored in a flagstone pattern. Uh, next, I've cut out four sections of wall. Now these are the same height as your stairway, and the same height as the bits you cut out for the uh, archway. So in this case, it was just slightly over two inches. But I've then also gone half an inch higher. So it's now a total of just over two and a half inches. And what you're going to do now is measure halfway along, six inches, and then mark an inch and a half either side. So it's a total of three inches, which is the width of the platform bit. And just measure down a quarter of an inch. Now what this would do, this would give you a little uh, walkway uh, part of it, if that makes any sort of sense to. Uh, so let me just show you now, quickly. Uh, if you then cut this out, have your platform we had here this will then butt up against it here so then you've got some sort of a little edging bit of it like so what you've got to do now is you've got to make two more uh, another piece the same size as this an inch long and then, but then you've got to make another bit, which I've done here, that is an inch and a half long. So that's doubled two widths worth of uh, size. And that's because you can have two sides of an inch and then two sides going across forming a square. So you're going to need four pieces in total. Two 12 and a half inches and two an inch, uh, 12 inches, like that. Cut out each of the bits and all of them. And all that's left to do now is assemble it, which we'll do in a minute. Before we do assemble it, it's add in the brickwork as normal. And what we're going to do is to make it easier, flip it over, easier to assemble. So, what we want to do is sit the uh, top of it so if this is top of it, it's gonna get that on camera it's gonna sit there on them now to make it easier 
cut out four strips of uh, any strip uh, material you've got, either off cuts of this, or in this case, I'm using a foam, foam board. And you're just going to glue them in place, sitting flush along here. Uh, actually, it's just going to be under. So you have yeah, so it's about a quarter of an inch under. So using an off cut as, as a measure, we're just going to glue it across there. That's what we do. So we just help it, help it glue in place, really. What we're going to do is stick it roughly in place. Put your space for in so you can see what you're doing. Or you'll put still on camera, of course. So that's sitting flush there. And that is where that's going to glue. Do that for the other four. What I've done, just to give it a bit of extra support, I've just put some pins in here. I'll just hold it in while we glue it, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to take one of the 12, 12 inch pieces, get some glue, run it along, and just run some on now. Stand. And we are also, just to save a bit of time, I'm going to take a uh, 12 and a half piece, and we're going to run a bead of glue along this section here. Okay, run it down here, like we did on the other bit just now. And again, a little tab there. What we do, again, I imagine this can be quite tricky on camera. Uh, place that in where it's going to go there. In, that's in there. Then glue this in place here. Guess I think for it now, just to hold it in place while it dries. Let's see, it's there. Uh, actually, the bottom. Resting on the, uh, the bits there. That's it, really. Nothing to it, but just to probably easier to do this uh, little section at a time. Although uh, I'm impatient, so I could do uh, the other side. Something similar. Taking the uh, next 12 and a half uh, section. Little bead along here. Little bead of glue along here. That's going along there. A little bit running down here. And then a bit running along here. Glue this bit in place. Like so. Top there, you can see where the walkway comes comes up to the air. Put in place. I'm sure, this is all still lined up, which it is. can possibly do if you wanted to is put some pins in go right into the uh, base and pull them out when they're dry but I don't think I'll need to but if you are having difficulty <coughs> now the final part it's just this top bit here 
might as well do. It's going to be uh, this bit here. So for this, bead of glue on this edge, bead of glue on this edge, and then as we've done before, and all the way down there. Along here, and you might want to use some. Uh, this is fairly good PVA. It's fairly quick drying compared to others. Then what we want to do? Put it in there, like so. It's all lined up. That's in. There like that. Make sure it's just fairly, uh, fairly accurately in there. That's it. That is going to be the raised bit. What's going to happen is probably tempting fate here. So you go down like so, and. That's going to go along to there, like that. And then on top of here, you can put some of the ruins you've already made right at the beginning of this video. Just have a little raised ruin building. Yeah, and that's it. All we've got to do now is uh, paint it. Let this dry, let this dry, and paint it. It's going to be painted in much the same way as the. Uh, Ministerial uh, walls. It's going to be black, a, a grey, and then a off white. I'm just going to let this dry. That's good. <clears throat> the only thing that's left to do now is to paint them. Uh, these are painted in the same way as the Ministerial walls. They're undercoated in black. Given a dry brush with this cutter here, which is a tester pot from Wilkinson's called uh, Flintstone. It'll once that's dry, you give it a, uh, a lighter dry brush with this colour, which is called Urban Grey. And that's it. Just paint all the pieces. Let's have a look at a showcase. If you enjoyed this video please like and share it and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Game on and continue to support our wonderful hobby.